I started this painting as part of a live stream event that Science Friday had with a really cool app called I See Change, where people on their walks and when they're out and about in their neighborhoods can report the environmental changes that they're seeing, like flowers blooming, or in this case, cacti blooming, the presence of snakes, rabbits, foxes, birds, and I was able to take audience suggestions during this live stream and start painting them with gouache. Now, I only had 45 minutes to start the painting, and when I was done with the 45 minutes, I still wasn't quite happy with how it looked. You can see I'm missing a lot of details. In particular, none of the animals have faces. So I took some extra time, 90 minutes or so to be exact, to finish up the painting to a level that where I thought I'd be a little bit more proud of it and have some of more of my style going on. In this corner of the painting, I'm mostly focusing on kind of a sandy, dry environment to show the different animals and plants that people were observing where they lived. But people from all over the country tuned in and we had lots of different environments that we needed to depict on this page. So in this corner, I have some bugs that I painted in, snakes, rabbits, cacti with flowers blooming, but someone also said they had seen a fox that morning. It definitely seemed like there was a pattern of comments from the audience about seeing more wildlife in their suburban or urban environments like a city where they normally wouldn't see them as much. And it's not clear if this is due to the fact that more people are staying inside due to social distancing or anything that has to do with the animal migration patterns. But that's why this data that I see change collects is so important because tons of people can report the things that they're seeing in their environment and I see change can collect all of that information and get a better picture at what's going on across the country or even compare what's going on in a certain month compared to in years past. This kind of data collection is called citizen science. It means that you don't actually have to have a science degree or be actively participating in science classes or in a laboratory to collect really valuable data that science will be done on. So I would recommend anybody who's interested in their environment, nature, climate change, wildlife patterns to check this app out. You can find it, it's just called I See Change and you can use it to report everything from whether you're seeing animals that you haven't typically noticed, like birds flying around. Someone had mentioned they had seen a sandhill crane flying, which is this big bird that I'm painting here in the sky. But also the IC Change app did play a really important role when there was a lot of flooding due to hurricane activity. So in addition to just capturing changes that are happening in different times of the year, it can also be a really important tool for mapping the impact of natural disasters like flooding, et cetera, and wildfires. And that's something that we see a lot in California, but wherever you live, there's going to be lots of things that you can observe and contribute to practice science every day in a way that you don't even have to leave the house. A few other people also mentioned differences in snow. So some people had actually just experienced a huge snowfall in the middle of April, which is typically not common, but some other people had noticed that they had barely any snow at all, which is different in years past. Yeah, comparing many years is the exact kind of data that is really hard for a single scientist to collect because scientists can change their career position every few years and maybe there's going to be gaps in data. So having a team of citizen scientists, maybe even hundreds or thousands of them, can actually make this data collection way easier and way more robust. Now, some people also mentioned a lot of squirrels, so I decided to add two of them on this tree here. And you can see how just by a few extra brush strokes, the shape and form of the squirrels really stands out. So there's always a way to fix a painting, especially with gouache because it's so opaque. Now here, I'm painting a giant puddle of water because flooding was also brought up in the presentation. Flooding is something that can impact different areas in a city much differently than others. And sometimes this is especially true where there is a lot of income inequality between residents in a city. One of the speakers on the panel lives in Madison, Wisconsin, right around the lake. And there's actually a lot of disparities between the quality of life 
and who's impacted more by an event of flooding based on how the infrastructure around their house and in their neighborhood might be. So actually you might have a lot of differences in experience during a flood between people who live only less than a mile away, which is even more good reason for lots of people to be reporting how weather changes and environmental effects are actually impacting their lives. So we can get a more complete story and understanding of how things are happening. All right, and here's the finished painting. If you want to watch the initial 45 minutes of it and listen to the panel itself, I will link to that in the description. It was so fun painting this for Science Friday. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.